Hey guys, Ice Warden here. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick video to show you how to get a Myth of Empires server running on your dedicated box. Now, I know there was a video released earlier today that showed you how to get it running on your local machine, but I know a lot of us want to run our own dedicated for our private communities. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that it is downloaded through Steam. Uh, surprising, that is an issue. Please download it through Steam and right click on there, manage, browse local files. Now I'll bring up this guy. So the two main important things here is this folder called private server tool and a folder called windows private server. You guessed it. This is where the server files are. So the private server tool here is what we're going to use to quickly configure our server. So if we open this guy here, you have a server listing. That's basically just going to be all of your different configs. If you run multiple servers, uh, the server ID is just kind of an identifier as you can see here in the server list. And this, I believe is just kind of a description. Uh, so if we go to our basic settings here at the top, server name is where server name gets set. You set your password if you don't want people to join your server. Server introduction uh, is actually going to be a little tidbit. that will be off to the right hand side in the server list. I can show you that there in a minute. Um, you can set 0, 01 PVP PVE. Player limit does go to 100. However, for some reason with the end game menu, we can push it to 200. Whether or not that works, I don't have 200 people to test that. Uh, there is a send announcement button with announcement content. Now this is something that's going to scroll across the screen every time you join the server. I'll demonstrate that here in a minute as well. Other important things here is the server ID. If you do run multiple servers on uh, one physical server, you will need to change this ID. You cannot have the same IDs among servers. Uh, the cluster ID hopefully is going to work similar to the ARC servers, in which case uh, when you do run multiple servers on the same physical, uh, you should be able to transfer between them. Uh, your port numbers here, by default, these are 51888 and 51889. I believe they have changed this with a recent update as these IPs will give you a uh, too large port number error. So the simplest fix is just to drop them down to a four digit port. So I'm just going to use, uh, actually this is going on a server that's going to be using uh, multiple servers. So we're actually going to do 5893 and 5894. Now this closed server port here is a local only Archon port. Uh, so you will be able to connect to it. I'm not too sure what commands uh, we can use yet. I'm still exploring that, but I do know that the shutdown server command does work through Archon with this port, which will allow you to automate shutting down your server. Hopefully there's kind of a save world command that does the same thing that actually works and doesn't crash the server. Uh, from there, you have a bunch of different advanced options that you can go through. You can configure these as you wish. Uh, a lot of them are same from Arc and Atlas and Conan, just setting different multipliers. Once you have all this configured though, you can go down here to the start console. You can hit save configuration and then you can hit start server. Now what this will do is just pops up a little box, hit yes, it brings up this folder again. So when you hit the save config though, it will make a server parameters with the ID that you give it here. And inside the server parameter is all of your server configs that you selected earlier. Uh, now, how all of this ties in, I'm not 100% on yet, because if you do make any kind of edits in game, it doesn't edit this file and it doesn't edit any of the INIs that are actually saved in the dedicated server folders. So I'm, hopefully the devs will give us some more information on this later. Uh, from there, it also should have made a start private server bat file. Now, if we go, we can go look at this guy inside here. It's going to have a lot of the configurations that we selected earlier. Um, so one thing, uh, we will going to have to change a few things here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to need to change is this multi home and this out address. Why it defaults to 172, I don't know. I am not the developer. However, this multi home will need to be changed to the private IP address of the server you're going to be hosting on. So in the case for me, this is my dedicated server. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load up a shell window. I prefer to use PowerShell. You can use command line. Um, it really shouldn't matter. I don't know why this isn't low. Uh, because I wasn't. Okay, whatever. I already have a window open here. 
can just type IP config gives you the IP address of your server. This is what you're going to want to put in there for the multi home address. So we're just going to go ahead. We're going to change this here now. One, two, one, six, eight, one, that 15. Ooh. Now this out address, ooh, this out address needs to be the public IP address of your server. For security reasons, I'm not going to change this here. I'm not, I don't want to give away my public IP, but you will want to change this to the public IP address of your server. Uh, you can use a website called ipchicken.com in order to get that easily. So as we scroll down here, once again, it's a lot of the configuration that was already set. You will see this one here, session name. Now, if you do put a space in your session name, which was in the configuration, basic settings, server name, it will not automatically add the quotes. So you will have to go in here. You will have to add double quotes at the start and at the end. Otherwise, this server would have launched as just a test. And well, we don't want that. We want test community. Uh, so if we go down here, private server password, this looks like this is this is for the the local archon password so you can change this as you need it uh the description game server type max players all the other fun configurations so we can go ahead and save this now if we wanted to we could launch this right here on our local computer by just hitting the start private server bat that's not what we want because we want to run this on a dedicated machine what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to back up and we're going to want to take these two folders and we're going to copy them over to our dedicated machine. Now for time's sake, because they are about four gigs almost in size, I've gone ahead, I've already copied them over. Uh, so this is going to be my Myth of Empires third server that I'm hosting. Uh, so you can see here, all I did was just copy those two folders straight from here over to here. At that point, uh, we will need to make one more edit in our bat file. If we edit this here, if you are running multiple servers on the, yeah, if we're running multiple Myth of Empire servers on the same physical server, we will need to remove this line from that start server bat. And that is because this line will check to see if the executable is already running. And if it is, it just exits. So it doesn't actually launch your server. You will need to just remove that from the start server bat and you're good to go. Now we can launch that. As you can see, the server is launching. Now, usually while this happens, you can go and you can port forward uh, your server ports if you need to, um, depending on what kind of hardware you have. Can't really help you there. <laughs> but it, I do know it is UDP based, not TCP. So you're gonna make sure you wanna port forward those guys. So it does look like the server is coming up here. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to go and launch our Myth of Empires game. I'm just going to do it right from here because I already have it open. Really loud game in my ears. Here's the bulletin. And we can go to custom server here, wait for it to load. We can search for test community because that's the name of the server that we just made. So uh, remember earlier, the server description or if you click this little button right here at the end to the right, show you that server description. Uh, so this is what we set earlier. And then if we go ahead and we connect, we made the password one, two, three, four, five, six. Loading, loading, loading. And we are in the server and you can notice there, men, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, server notification that we set is going to scroll across the top of the screen there. Uh, and this is going to happen every time you log into the server. So try not to make it too annoying for your players. But other than that, server setup should be good to go. 
I'll have a link to the Admins United Discord at the bottom of this video. You guys can join there, and I can try to lend a hand myself into Goose uh, if anyone needs it. Uh, other than that, uh, have a good day.